I don't memorize, I derive. If you haven't heard the words of Octavio Hernandez, our longtime world-renowned math teacher here at Haynes, then you don't know what you're missing out on. But what does this simple phrase of words mean at its core? Well, when it comes to math and life in general, Mr. Hernandez is simply asking his students to pursue the reasons behind knowledge, the derivations, rather than blindly accept facts and formulas. And we all know this. We know we're not supposed to accept an argument without rationale supporting it. We know we're supposed to question everything. It's ingrained in our DNA. It's something called human curiosity. Yet very few of us actually take this step. I've been to too many classes, competitions, and other extracurricular activities where I see so many roads to greater intellectual stimulation. Yet none of these roads travel. What is it that silences us when there's a question probing our minds? How can we, as students in the classroom and adults in the real world, think of the right questions to ask? The answer lies most directly in mathematics. Now, I know what you're thinking. Suraj, you're giving a TED talk. You must be, you must have loved math since birth. And that just makes you another nerd trying to spread his radical ideas to the world. Well, you're right, but please bear with me. I'm here to prove two things. One, math is useful. Two, math is your friend. In fact, it's your best friend. It is truly to be embraced. The real beauty in math lies in the fact that it's accessible. We use it to communicate. And that means that even if it isn't your strong suit, you can at the very least be cognizant of its implications wherever it appears. You can love it just as much. So let me give you an unrelated question. When's the last time you took a break from the cyclical nature of your daily life? You know, work, school, extracurriculars. And you thought about your life. Chances are, not recently. As teenagers and young adults, we get so caught up in school and work and our passion, Snapchat, Netflix, YouTube. We never get the time to step back and take it all in. So let's go for a walk in the park. All right, first I ask you, simply observe this image. I call it Pleasant Park. Take it in, focus on the details, the trees, the path. Now I ask you to pick one singular item. It could be anything. Once you have your item, connect it however you can to what you know to be mathematics. It's okay if you can, but please try. Some people in this room may be thinking, damn, you just ruined this image for me. It was so beautiful, now you're connecting it to math. But what you don't realize is, I've simply given you another way to look at it. I made it more beautiful. Because math isn't just numbers. It's pattern and logic. It's a language, a sense, and at its core, a deeper way to understand life. That means that you have just as much potential to indulge in math as the person sitting next to you. I want all of you today, as adults and young adults with bright futures, to forget all negative preconceptions you have about the subject. Forget all the grades and simply love math. So let's go back to the park. You may have picked an aspect of the trees, maybe their leaves. Now, when I try to make a relation to math in the real world, I think, and I go to this leaf, I think, I think of ways that I can connect this. So, the first thing that pops out to me when looking at this picture is the veins of leaf. And you notice how it starts at one central structure and diverges into many different branches. Now, when I tried to make that connection, what, what does this remind me of in math? I thought factor trees, right? So, remember those factor trees we used to do in elementary school? Does that kind of remind you of the veins in the leaf? It's okay if it doesn't, but that's what it is. And when I looked up real-world implications of factor trees, I found that factor trees are used in financial calculations everywhere. Vending machines, ATMs, cashiers from Walmart. 
They each use factor trees to make sure that you get the right amount of change. Because when I go to pay for my groceries with a $20 bill, the cashier is breaking that 20 into two tens, four fives, 20 ones. We're not even conscious of this, and it's happening in front of our very eyes. Moving on, we have the aging leaf of a blueberry plant. And if I didn't know it was a blueberry plant leaf, then I might think it were roads in a city or maybe even veins in my hand because it has that kind of same kind of uh, pattern and structure to it. This is how I want you to look at any complex problem from now on. It's a large structure, it may look complex, but break it into its pieces. And that's why I share this image with you. Break something that seems complicated into its pieces that make it easier for you to comprehend. Moving on, we have examples of the same phenomenon. We have lightning and we have a splash in a wave. Now, the water reminds me of my time as a swimmer. I've been on my school swim team for six years and frankly, I'm not very good. I don't compare to the year-round swimmers who've been grinding at the sport for their entire lives. But if there's one thing I've learned from swimming, it's that swimming, like all sports, requires mental focus. And believe it or not, I channel my mental focus through mathematics. So I joined the swim team as a sixth grader with the speed of a sloth and the strength of a fly. The tryouts required four laps, 25 meters each. And I knew how to swim. My dad told me to get out of my comfort zone and try out. So I did, and I made the team. I thought, that was easy. I got this, I'm gonna be the best swimmer ever. Little did I know how draining of a sport swimming would prove to be. Next day, I came back and coach told me to swim 300 meters for the warm up. So 100 meters became 300 meters. And soon, that 300 meters turned into 500 meters for a warm up, 20 laps. The, the pain was excruciating. I could not take it. I was out of here, back to being my nerdy self. But for some reason, I stuck with it. And I'm glad I did. And that meant that for one hour every night, my arms and legs would be vigorously flailing around in the water, and I'd be gasping for every last breath. And to make things worse, I was a middle schooler competing in the high school meets, making me the slowest swimmer there, automatically. I didn't know the technique, and I didn't stand a chance. But here's where the math comes in. When I was first in the water, all I could think about was the pain that my body was feeling. But over time, I learned to make the numbers my friend. Now if coach tells me to swim that same 20 lap warm up, I accept it with confidence because I know that I can break it down into pieces. I've swim the 20 laps one by one. I count and calculate at each flip turn. I keep track of how many laps I've taken, how many breaths I've taken, and how I can maximize my efficiency down to the very tips of my fingers in performing a stroke. And all this, it may seem like a nerd doing fruitless computation underwater, but it keeps my mind engaged with the task. And it gives me the hope that I can continue and finish this task. Now, you may be thinking, this isn't very relatable, right? But it is. Any impossible task, any task that you find difficult, can be achieved by quantifying it. So let's go back to the park. We stumble upon a cute little bunny. He's so cute. But actually he looks a little bit lonely, so I'm gonna give him a friend. There he goes, now he has a mate. And we wanna look for real world implications of math, right? So we watch our bunnies over time. And we keep track of their numbers. These are the kind of numbers we get. So we started off with one pair, they grew up, they produced babies, and if we keep track of the numbers over time, we see that we had one pair turned into two pairs, three pairs, five pairs, eight pairs, 13, 21, 34, so forth. Now, I'm not sure if you've, if you've heard of my good friend Fibonacci, but he created a sequence that entails these very numbers. But what I found crazy was that he didn't just 
add numbers together. He didn't just do 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5, and get these numbers. He observed it in nature. And then he extended it across the entire natural spectrum. He put his numbers into a spiral. Each square has a side length corresponding to the term in the Fibonacci series. Where else have we seen spirals? The petals of a flower, the shell of a snail, the tail of a seahorse, the spiral of a hurricane, the very helical structure of our DNA has this same exact spiral shape to it. To me, that simply cannot be a coincidence. That has to be something greater, something that God put in this world that has these patterns. And math is what allows us to see these patterns. Math is why we have meaning in life. And this is why we should push the boundaries of knowledge as we know it. So with that said, I encourage you, get out of your comfort zone and see the world in terms of math. If you don't listen to me, listen to our bunnies. Listen to the trees around you and the numbers with which they speak. Most importantly, Listen to your own sense of math and talk back to it. Ask it questions. Learn from these questions and look for their answers. Go for a real walk in the park. On your own, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Thank you very much.